My in-laws were unbelievably generous with us and let us stay for a couple days at a cabin they had rented for the winter while they weren't there. So I thought I'd share some of the work I managed to get done while over there. But first, let's make some breakfast. Number one thing, you'll know from my last video I just upgraded my computer, and it's the first time I'm actually trying to build my current project on it. Obviously something went wrong at some point in time, and some files were missing. Luckily I had brought my old computer too, and was able to fix the issue without having to redo too much work. As you may know, if you've been here before, I'm working on a journaling app with an emphasis on mental well-being. So now that everything is working again, I jumped back into adding all the core functionalities I haven't worked on yet. Number one was adjusting the journal entries so that they are limited to one a day. That means having some way to compare between days. Fortunately, Donnie Walls has a nice blog post on how to achieve that. Well, almost, but I'll come back to that later. And with that, we have a way to update today's journal entry or to create a new one if there wasn't one already. Just one problem, the app uses what's in the database by default as its state when you open the main journal view. So if you just tab between different views without saving, you lose the changes you've made in that current session. To fix that issue, following the update from the database, I then checked to update from the current session's input from the user, creating a priority sequence for what to actually display to the user. Before it gets dark, I better go shovel up outside too. Back at the desk, we have a maximum of one journal input per day, so we can start displaying it nicely in the calendar display I showed in my last development vlog. So I have one input for the 16th of February, we should see that in the calendar, and for some reason it displays in two cells. I guess at least it updates correctly when you change it. Alright, so it turns out that snippet I took from Donnie Walls will return zero days difference if the difference in hours is under 24 hours. So depending on when the journal input was created and the dates I check it against, it will return a difference of zero days for two different inputs, which is not what I want. Luckily we have a way to normalize a day by using the start of day function. That way, comparing the 16 and the 17 will return one day difference, no matter what the actual hour is on each date objects. And now it looks like it's working. That should be enough for now, I'm just going to reheat a bit of soup and hang out by the fireplace for a while. So I know the title of the video says a day in the life, but can you look at that sky? I can't help myself but to shoot another day from here. And working on the project is fun, but can't forget that we're lucky enough to be at a cabin right now, so we're gonna make the most of this amazing sky and go for a skate. Next up, I want to be able to go through the calendar and update the journal entry of any date. Whether it's because you missed a day and want to go back, or you want to update something you might have missed the day of. So I'll add a modal view that's opened when clicking on a date, and here's where my unfamiliarity with SwiftUI showed because I felt like I didn't have a good way to update the date I wanted to update while keeping a clean architecture. So far I only had one view that had to access my core data context and make changes to it, and in very bad form those operations were highly coupled with that specific view. So I decided to try to extract that logic and all it needed into a centralized class that can manage my journal entries. 
Tony Wallace came to the rescue again with a post on how he achieved something similar by using a storage class that uses published variables so that whatever UI wants to use those variables can be updated automatically when they change. I just added an instance of that storage class as an environment variable so that it can be accessed by all the views that need it fairly easily. Doing that whole process obviously went through a couple iterations of breaking everything I had before, but I slowly made my way back to being able to save journal entries using that cleaner approach. And it was very easy to make that data available to that new modal view you opened from the calendar display. Next time, I'll finish cleaning the project up and make sure that I can save journal entries to any day using that new modal view. Hope you enjoyed this little peek into my development. I'll see you all next time, and until then, take care.